With a piece of my hand and bloodshot eyes, I walk to the water for a last goodbye. He begs so much, it clouded my mind. All the cows are highly productive here. It take me the animal farm where the cows are milked. We have a rotary parlor with 32 spots. We have arrived at the cattle farm. Let's see if the stalls are clean, what has been done on the feed table, and we'll see if the feed has been shoveled. Can you see me well? We came to see building two, where we have the calves. Let's see if they don't cough, if they are in dry conditions, and if they have enough feed. Ah, look how good our hay is. A bale is already prepared. Hay with leaves, we managed to say everything. So I sniffed and immediately salivated. There are straight clean leaves in the hay. Here's a click, and it immediately collapses. That's really cool. Quick look, clean, excellent, the hay is everywhere. We have a lot of calves here. There is a feed, water, they are given milk here by cows. I like it. Let's move on. So the first thing we pay attention to is to see if the feed is not shoveled. You can see that the cow is eating, but she cannot reach here. She needs to have it like this. Now it is much better. The feed must be shoveled every hour to avoid such problems. What a good cow. It brings good milk. Wow. All the cows here are highly productive, and they can give a lot of milk. One cow can produce 40 liters per day. First, let's see the stalls. The stalls are dry here, we look there. It's dry, we look there. The stalls are dry, all is clean. That will do. The second thing we look at is the quality of the feed. The feed is well mixed. However, there are a few things such as this haylage from the top of the stack, and a little bit spoiled. It does not smell very good. And sometimes when things like this gets into the feed, and because a cow can smell very well, the spoiled feed will lay down and the cow simply will not eat it. Thus, it is important that such things are not mixed into the feed. Let's go and see the milking parlor and how the cows are milked. We have a rotary parlor with 32 spots. The cow enters the parlor and it spins on average for five to six minutes. There are four operators. The first operator wipes perfectly with disposable wipes, sprinkles them with peroxide, then disinfects and wipes again. 
The second operator makes the first squeezing, I will call it like that, to open the udders and to get rid of the bad bacteria. The third operator puts on the caps, and then it milks. When the milking is done, the cups falls off automatically. The fourth operator wipes the nipples with preservative so that the udder stays open for an hour after milking. And when the cow comes out after milking and lies down in the stall, the bacteria cannot get into the udder, so we preserve it. As you can see, the cows are clean. The most important thing in the milking parlor is that the cow stays clean. The udder is clean, and this means that the stalls are clean. If the stalls are dirty, respectively, the udder is in manure, and it is dirty. It is so unpleasant to approach it. And now we can see that the udder is clean and beautiful, and they are just entering the parlor. This is a very good indicator. I have a couple of units of Kobzarenko. This is a shovel produced by them, plus the rollers Slon, which are the best for pressing silage and haylage. And I also have one manure tank of Kobzarenko with capacity of 20 cubic meters of liquid manure. And the other one they modified and remade for me. The Kobzarenko plant is a very interesting option for making an episode there. Be sure to write them comments, put likes, and we will try our best to make an episode about them. Just a couple days ago, we finished haylage on this 76 hectare field. Here we had it in alfalfa for five years. We brought it out, made a light disc on the diagonal, not even light, but as deep as possible. I'm sorry. And literally, last year, we bought a kibon subsoiler that works at 65 to 70 centimeters. On this field, we have alfalfa. The field is very hardy packed, and I want to loosen the soil as much as possible, all over, over the entire depth and over the entire width. The width of the subsoiler is 3 meters, case 340, 340 horsepower. He deepened it to 45 centimeters, but the soil is so compacted that it's hardly pulling it. I will even think about going in two passes. We'll see. Therefore, we pay attention on loosening this compacted soil as much as possible, and not only after alfalfa, but in general. There are a lot of fields that compacted, so we took a special probe to measure soil compaction. We will remove these compaction layers as much as possible to make it easier for the roots, especially for corn, to grow. It is very important. It holds and absorbs much better. It's easier for the root to go better, respectively. Preferably to deepen it, but we cannot. If it goes any deeper, we have 40% slippage and the tractor just stops. I'm planning to put such a subsoiler on the cat tractor on tracks. I just checked the work of this Kivon subsoiler. We acquired it only last year, and it made literally 20 hectares after the John Deere 2700 subsoiler. It was hard to check the effectiveness. Now it went after the discs on a maximum depth of 45 centimeters, and even then, the tractor engine was loaded by 90 to 100 percent. So, I drove in one track. I tried the paw width, normally 45 centimeters, and literally around 10 centimeters between the paws. It spits and fluffs it up to the wrong depth. We just tried it on the second, the track on the diagonal, and it went perfectly. As I put the probe, it generally falls into the soil itself. 
Whoever understands will understand me. It fluffs up so cool across the entire width to a depth of 45 to 50 centimeters. Well, I just got a high out of it. Probably, I will work after alfalfa in two tracks. A little costly in terms of money, the effect will be amazing. We will plant the wheat in the fall, then corn, and it should be perfect. Yesterday, we finished picking this field with our powerful hay. After we went with military hair, these are the hedgehogs that make such holes. Come on, I'll get out of the car to show you. As we finished picking up alfalfa haylage, and immediately after we start up rotary harrows, these are hedgehogs to give air. That is, as you can see, to show the difference. Let's go here. Here's the alfalfa. We have loosened the ground a little with these rotary harrows, covered the moisture, gave air to the alfalfa, so it will grow better then. And here is where we did not do rotary harrows, just an asphalt. It is rolled in to such an extent. This is where the DAF probably have passed. There's also a crust here. And there's also the fact that there was no rain, a drought. And of course, you can see the effect of rotary harrows. Sometimes it throws a little breast like this. But this is due to the fact that it's dried up a little. After rain, when the ground is more humid, it works better. But again, the effect is immediately noticeable. A couple of days, two or three days, it grows much better. I advise everyone who has animal farms, who is engaged in alfalfa growing and prepares haylage or hay. You mow it, and after each moving, you pass with these harrows. That's a cool thing. <laughs>